The pioneers of generative AI and creators of Stable Fusion, Stability AI, has a secret project. The brand new Stable Swarm. All the power of Comfy UI in an easier interface. The name Swarm is also a little special because it has multi-GPU support. Connect a bunch of GPUs or rent from an online provider for massive speed. Let me show you how to install it and what it looks like. I'm also going to show you a very cool model feature that no other user interface has yet. I'll get back to you in a minute with a dad joke. AI. All right, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to install .NET 7, and then we're going to install Stable Swarm. Let's get to it. All the links are going to be in the description below, so check that. First, we're downloading .NET 7. We are on Windows, so we're going to use this one here, the x64. If you are not on Windows, if you are on Linux or Mac, there are install instructions on the GitHub page here. It says installing on Windows, install on Linux, installing on the Mac. This is a Windows guide. We're starting here. We're downloading this file. We are running it. We're clicking install. This should be a fairly quick setup but uh, it could take a couple of minutes depending on your computer. It took about 30 seconds for me. Then you can just close that. And then we're gonna go to the GitHub page and you're gonna see this. Then you're just gonna scroll down here, installing on Windows and it says download the install Windows bat file and store it somewhere you want to install it but not your program files folder. So we're downloading this. I'm creating a new folder here in my computer called Swarm. And I'm copy pasting that file that we downloaded into here. And then I'm just double clicking that. Now it says Windows protected your PC, just press more info and run anyway. And then you will have a command window running. Now, sometimes, it happens just like that. Your command window just disappears. However, if that happens, you should have something on your desktop. So I have this file here that was on the left side of my desktop, Stable Swarm UI. So just click that again. And now this should start up again. Build succeeded and it was very quick. And this page loaded for us. So we're just going to scroll down here agree to the license. We're going to choose a theme. I prefer this black theme here with the beautiful purple buttons. And I'm clicking next. Then it asks, who is this Stable Swarm UI installation going to be used by? For now, it's just available for yourself on this PC or with LAN access. So if you want to access this maybe from your phone or another computer or something. I'm just going to use it just yourself on this PC. Now, this is where it could be a little tricky. If you just want it quick and easy, press Comfy UI local here and press next. Now, the stability API here, you can run it through services. If you have an example, the Dream Studio, just put your API key in here. And you can also skip the backend install. For example, if you have a pre existing installation of Comfy UI, for example, then you can select this one here and uh, choose that later. But we're just going to make a fresh install of everything. So we want this Comfy UI will be installed for us together with Stable Swarm. Next, we can choose the models that we want. I don't want 1.5 or 2.1 base because they're not fantastic. I would rather use custom models based on 1.5. However, I want to use Stable Diffusion 1.0 and the Refiner. Now, if you already have an installation of Comfy, Automatic 11, Vlad, SDNext, whatever, you can use the models in those directories. So bear in mind, you don't have to download this. But if this is a fresh install and you don't have any models, just click these and press Next. And then it's just a summary of what you've selected. And you can just press Yes, I'm sure install now. Now the backend for Comfy UI will be downloaded. And if you're unsure if the installation has stopped or not, you can open the, the terminal or command window and see what's going on. And we can see here that there is a progress going on. We have 14, 15, 16% and it's actually working. So just uh, give it a few minutes 
and uh, let it install. Once you reach 100%, Stable Swarm will launch and it successfully did here. So here we have the user interface of Stable Swarm. And, and what's cool about this is you have the Comfy UI workflow editor up here. If you press this little tab, you can see your Comfy UI workflow. However, all these nodes are also inside the generate tab. So if you press generate up here, you have the user interface and all those nodes, well, basically here. So you have the prompt here and you have the negative prompt. You have some core parameters like the image and seed, how many steps you want the CFG scale, your resolution. The cool part about this is that whenever you add a node here, let's say I'm adding, uh, let's load a, a, a Laura here. If I load that in here, now I haven't connected it, but it doesn't matter. If I press use this workflow and generate tab, we'll actually see that Laura loader here is available in the user interface. So that's really cool. Now, what you might want to do, especially if you have a previously installed version of another user interface like, like Automatic 11.11, Go into server here, server configuration, and you have the model root here. And now if you input your folder for stable diffusion and the model root, which is this. So stable diffusion web UI, that's the root folder for my automatic 1111. .11. I'm just going to move my face. Now oh, we're not using the text down in the left corner, but it doesn't matter. And then the models that will load all my models that I have in automatic 1111. .11. So I am saving this and then I need to restart. So I'm just quitting this, going back to my desktop, opening Stable Swarm again. This is loading super quick. Didn't even have to speed that up in post. And now we can see my models here are available. So that's super cool. And it even works for, let's say here that we add load upscale model here. And we can actually see, I haven't installed any upscalers for Stable Swarm, but these have been collected from my automatic 11.11 folder. Then I could add in here, let's remove the lowers here, and let's add in image upscaling, upscale image using model. We're connecting that, and we're connecting the image here, and let's add a new save image. There we go. Let's change that, and we can, Press this use this workflow in generate tab. And now you can see here that the upscale, the model loader for the upscaler is available here. Now this is grayed out as you can see here, but if you click this or here, it will open it. We can see here when we press generate, then we can get the beautiful scenery, nature, glass ball landscape. Now, and you can also see down here what settings to use and we use the upscaler. This is a pretty cool image. Now this is made by Stability AI. And I think the main dev for this is uh, McMonkey and he's been doing some stellar work with this. Oh, I wanna show you this feature as well. If you press the models button down here, a little tab, what's really Cool. Well, you can't really see it in the old models, but it's very clear here on the SDXL. All your models will collect the data automatically of, well, what kind of model it is, if it has a thumbnail, what resolution it's trained on, and so forth and so forth. So, forth. so you can see here on the SDXL base that the author is stable AI. Its resolution is 1024 by 1024. And there's a description here and the little thumbnail. So that's really cool. And the same with the refiner. Now, most of my other models or custom community models don't have that particular info. However, it does say the name. Um, it's a stable diffusion version one model or version two here, for example, and the resolution that it has been trained on. So 512 by 512 or in uh, the example down here, 768 by 768. And this, I would assume, could be set for any model. So uh, this data could be loaded into the user interface. So that's really cool. And I hope a lot of other user interfaces will include that as well. Did you know that anyone who ever worked at Twitter is now an ex-employee or an ex-employee?